Well, hello, friends. It's great to see you. Will Davis Jr. here with Good News Today. I pray you're doing really, really, really well. Um, we're going to continue one more day this day talking about this concept of light and what it might mean and then push on into the Lord said it was good tomorrow in our next devotional. Shout out to my friend Julie Clark and her husband Dan and their great family. Julie is one of our prayer warriors and she watches Good News Today all the time. And I got a comment from her recently. So hi, Jules. Thanks for being you. Okay, you ready? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waves, and God said, or face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. So we've been talking about the significance of the fact that the first thing God made was light once he put creation in motion and why light versus other things? And what kind of light was it? Because remember, we don't have sun or moon till day four. So there was light. In fact, you have you have plants growing before sun and moon are born, born, made. So there's a, a miraculous provision of light, which is obviously the, the glory and the presence of God, which is what Revelation talks about. We'll have no sun or moon or day or night because the God's glory is enough. I believe that was the case in his pre-sin condition in Genesis chapter one. But I think light means something else, and we've been talking about it. I want you to really think about it. I think it means revelation. Let there be an awareness. Let there be information. Let there be an, an undeniable opportunity to know the Creator. So light is illumination. Light is bringing things that are in the dark into the light. Light is revelation. Revelation in the biblical sense is taking that which is unknowable and making it knowable. But the, the, he who holds the secrets chooses to reveal the secrets. That's what mystery and revelation are. And when God said, let there be light, I think he's saying everything that happens from here on out is designed that all of creation might know and worship me. And so the order of the days, the plants, the animals, the way he creates humans and sets them apart from everything else, the, the macro level of what God created and the very micro level of what God created, I believe was all designed in the language and emphasis of Romans chapter one to make his presence and his power and his nature undeniable. So I've been listening to a book on um, the God hypothesis and how the pendulum among even secular scientists is having to swing back a bit toward a, a creative moment from a creator, even though they don't want it to be that, because the science is so undeniable that there's a beginning to the universe and a beginning requires some type of beginner. And I got it, the book got into talking about DNA, which I can't tell you anything I know about DNA, just a little bit to be dangerous, but I know it's packed. The human cell is packed with information. And if you took all that information and put it in a phone book, okay, remember what a phone book was, the tiny font and it was this thick. If you put it in a phone book, it would be the size, it'd be the height of the Washington Monument. That's the kind of information that God put into our human DNA. So this is a, this is a CD from a friend of mine. He's an ACFer. Um, Paul Rohrbach, his stage name is P.J. Bostick. His wife's on our staff. They're delightful people. And this is a great CD, by the way. Um, he's an amazing musician. So this CD holds 700 megs of data, I think, 700 million megs of data. So uh, one character, it's got room for 700 million characters on this. And what we have been taught to believe is that the artistic work, the plastic, the paper um, happened randomly happened by chance even though it looks designed it's not it isn't designed it's random but in order for revolution and for the god hypothesis to be false for a god not to be part of it this cd had to form and then the cd had to write itself come up with the information that's on the cd the music that paul produced and write itself it's like a book like a chemical reaction happening between page and ink and a book happening but then the book produces the information that's in the book there's no outside source I obviously don't believe that. You have a lot more information in your human cell than this CD has on it. Billions and billions and billions of times more information in one human cell. It's staggering. So I believe when God said, let there be light, he also included in that information. That there is enough information in a human cell, to number one, the DNA strand, to control what we become, the color of our eyes, the kind of skin we have, the kind of hair we're going to have. Everything about a human is in that DNA, including misspellings, which produce 
um, special needs. When the, when the DNA strand doesn't work appropriately and there's misspellings and the chromosome deficiencies, you get birth defects. It's all wrapped up in that. All the information's in there. But God also put into that the fact that it's there and so miraculous and so much more information than we can ever comprehend. That information didn't produce itself. God put it in there. And he put it in there, number one, to help us become the humans we're meant to be, but also as evidence of his creation. Let there be light means everything you're going to find hereafter. No matter how big you magnify the universe or how much you dig into the tiny, most microscopic worlds, you're going to see my handwriting. It's all evidence of me. So let there be light means that I'm going to leave a trail from this point forward where the ability to know me is undeniable because I want every all parts of creation to know and worship me. Isn't that amazing? Inform- the information we have about the cell and about humanity, information is part of that deal when God said, let there be light. He's an amazing God. We love you, Lord. Thank you for this time. Uh, thanks for teaching us so much. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.